Now is Texas Pan American women's basketball coach, Larry Tidwell. Coach, if you want to just give us your general thoughts headed into the season. Well, the UTPA women's basketball program um, continues to take steps forward. We signed a very good recruiting class. We have a nucleus of uh, returners that I think are going to be pretty good players. And you mix all that together, and I think we can have a pretty, pretty good athletic team that is going to be able to push the ball in transition. We're going to be able to defend. We're still going to be a little bit small inside, but I, I think we're going to be able to guard people inside. We're getting a lot more physical. Great job by our strength and conditioning coach, uh, Matt Taylor, during the summer and during the preseason. He's done an excellent job of getting our kids stronger. And so we're just going to try to progress each and every day to get better and hopefully uh, contend for a WAC championship. Uh, your roster features a lot of players from Texas. There's a couple from Kansas, but uh, there's one that really sticks out on your roster. What can you tell us about your 6'2 uh, freshman from Iceland, starting with how to pronounce her name? Okay, it's Hildur Karchen's daughter. And I've recruited in Iceland. I've been in Iceland five different times. And when I was at TCU is when I first started recruiting in Iceland. And we signed a young lady out of there named Sevis' daughter. And uh, she was like the Mountain West Conference Player of the Year two different times. And so I've got a good relationship with a lot of people over there. I, like I said, I've been to the country five times. Hilder is a very good guard, uh, very good player. She's six one. She'll play the four position for us, and uh, she can shoot it. Uh, she can rebound. She handles it well. She's a straight A student. Uh, excellent role model. Is great in the community, and uh, just a great sign for us. And hopefully, going to be going back into Iceland and getting some more players in the future years. Coach, do you feel like the league is pretty open this year? There's a lot of different teams that could contend and potentially win it? I, I think one through eight. I mean, I, I study our league. I study the signings, people that signed it. You know, I think Cal State Bakersfield is picked first. We're picked second in one poll, third in another poll. Mark Trek at New Mexico State. Freeze at, at UMKC, always competitive. My gosh, Jones been to more playoffs than – and you can imagine, you know, what she did at Arizona, Long Beach State, Seattle, just a great program there. And, and Grand Canyon State, Trent's doing a great job, Kathy Nixon, Utah Valley State, Chicago State, look for them to be very, very good this year, very competitive. They have a lot of kids that they set out last year to transfer it in. And I, I think we have a very good league that from top to bottom, every game is going to be tough. It's going to be very tough. And when you go on the road, it's going to be even tougher. And so we got to hope that we take care of business at home and hope we can split some games on the road. There's not a whole lot of NCAA tournament history in the league. Is that sort of an exciting prospect to see that that road is pretty open for a school like UTPA? Well, there's not a whole lot of teams that maybe have been in the history of the league, but you look at uh, Joan Bombasini. I mean, she's been to it numerous times. I've been to quite a few. Mark Trek's been in quite a few. People know how to get there. And our teams in this league continue to get better. I like the fact that the WAC emphasis on basketball, men's and women's basketball, and I really like and appreciate that. And that's only going to continue to make our league stronger. So as we move forward, uh, I think our league is going to become a, a much better league. I know non-conference-wise, one of the reasons that we're playing such a good schedule of playing Texas, Texas A&M, Texas Tech, Baylor, New Mexico, DePaul, Virginia and Commonwealth, all on the road, is it to is to strengthen our RPI so that makes our conference RPI even better. You mentioned the strength of the league. How do you feel it stacks up to other leagues around the nation? I think uh, you know a lot of the teams in the league. You know, we lost some uh, we lost some really good players. I mean, you go down the list, and there's a lot of good players that graduated at Seattle, Cal State, Bakersfield, New Mexico State. UMKC had two really good players. Uh, and our league is going to be a, a younger league, but I think day in and day out, we're going to be able to play with the leagues. You know, playing with the SEC, playing with the Big 12 or the Big 10 is going to be hard. I mean, because, the, you know, they have, they have a lot of great players in those leagues, but I think any other league out there we can match up and play with. Coach, you have four starters returning this year. Um, based on the experience that they had last year, 
how beneficial do you think that's going to be going into this next season? And how do you think they can help the younger players? Well, I think one of the things, the key word you said there was last year. And uh, we brought some really good recruits in. So I could even have more. You know, I could, I could have uh, quite a few, uh, not say quite a few, but probably possibly two more new starters that will be in there. Um, we're having very competitive workouts. I like that. I like the fact that we're, we're really 10 or 11 deep. And as you get 10 or 11 deep, then you're going to be able to overcome injuries. You're going to be able, you're going to, be able to be competitive in workout. And I think that one of the biggest reasons that we're getting better now is we're very competitive in, in workouts. And having those four starters come in, back, yeah, that's huge. I mean, they're familiar with my system, but we're also uh, installing a new offense with uh, the better talent that we have this year. I'm able to do a lot more things offensively that I've done in the past. And we're going to try to get it up tempo. And I've really got some good shooters. And so uh, having those four starters back, very, very good, because they're all, each and every one of them is leading for me. Uh, KK Boyd, Tanisha Walker, Brittany Bush, Shante Goff have all stepped up and they're leading for me. It's huge for me, but then again, they know that if they don't bring it every day, somebody will take their place because we are deep. Shante Goff won WAC Freshman of the Year last year. How big of a role does she have on your team, and what are your expectations for her going forward? Well, it's sort of like uh, I'm an old football coach from high school days. If I had a good quarterback and good receivers, we were going to throw it. If I had a good running back, we were going to run it. Uh, Shantae Goff is an exceptional athlete who can score attacking the rim or shooting threes. We're definitely going to put the ball in her hands. It's just we use that KISS theory, that keep it simple, stupid theory, and we're going to make sure that she gets a lot of touches because, and I made it clear to my team a couple of weeks ago when we had a team meeting, she's our go-to person. I mean, we have, uh, I use the philosophy, we have generals, we have soldiers. Right now, Shantae's a general, and I've got four soldiers, and I'm trying to develop another soldier or two, I mean, excuse me, another general or two to go with her. But uh, Shantae Goff will be our go-to person, and uh, our team knows that, and they they appreciate the fact that she can get it done. So, yeah, she's a, she's a big-time player. And I've had, oh, I guess in 18 years of coaching, I've had 31 young ladies that have gone on to the next level and played either in the WNBA or played overseas. And she certainly has that potential to be one of those players that will continue her, her, uh, continue her basketball after her college days are over. She's an outstanding talent and a very hard worker and very competitive. From what you've seen so far in practice, you, you did mention that you could have a couple other starters on your team based on some of the recruits that you've had. Are there any uh, players that have really stood out or surprised you based on what you've seen so far? Well, I think the, uh, the one we talked about earlier, Karchin's daughter from Iceland, I knew she was pretty good, but I didn't particularly know that she was that good. And uh, she's practiced extremely well. K.K. Boyd has added another dimension to her game, a mid-range jumper that she didn't have last year. She's worked hard on that. Like I said, Goff gets it to the rim, Bush battles, and we just got to continue to keep her healthy. You know, she had a bad back down the stretch last year, and we lost her, and it really did really did hurt us. But uh, I've been impressed with uh, a girl, uh, Raquel Preston. Uh, she brings a dimension to the, to the game for us defensively of where we can really press and up-tempo people. Uh, Troy Swain is a scorer. Stephanie Onyeje has just been really surprising. With She's so good defensively, but I'm getting an excellent senior leadership from Shazé Wright. Hey, she's really come back, and she's in a lot better shape, and she is really playing well, shooting the ball well, as is uh, CP, and that's Sherelle Price, another senior, shoots the ball extremely well. And I'm just getting a lot of good work out of uh, Laura Van Tilburg. And uh, Tiandria Nolan, needless to say, is the unsung hero on our team. She comes off backup point guard. I can even move uh, KK to the two and start Nolan at the point. Uh, Nolan is, is really uh, has a lot of credibility and, and matter of fact was uh, elected captain by her teammates about three weeks ago and knowing that you know she's not a starter but she still creates that kind of positive energy, positive attitude that uh, ensures that she's going to help lead this team. Coach, you mentioned uh, some of your uh, non-conference games that you've got. You're headed to, to play some big-time schools, including Final Four participant Baylor. 
uh, playing those kind of schools, how does that help recruiting and how does that help kind of get your team in the right mindset heading to conference play? Well, we definitely are, are going to play, you know, we'll get used to playing on the road in uh, hostile arenas and, and that's going to help us as we get into league play in the WAC. When you go in and play a Texas in front of 15,000, you play a Baylor that's going to be sold out. You play Texas Tech, they're going to have a bunch. We catch A&M, New Mexico, and DePaul at the DePaul tournament. So we get them on a neutral court. But you're, you're, you're in the process of uh, you're going to play some teams that are really, really good. And, and we got to battle. we got to continue to make it better. But one thing that uh, we do that I'm, I'm really impressed with that we've done the last two summers is uh, our kids go to summer school. And we do that for a lot of reasons. One, strength and conditioning. We get better. We get better at basketball. But we also get to the point to where academics is very, very important to us. We get ahead academically. And when you can do that and when a kid can raise their GPA and can get courses to where they're going to graduate on time, that's huge. And when we play teams like Texas, Baylor, um, on the road like that, go to the DePaul tournament, Texas Tech, you're going to be able to put some money back into your uh, to your education fund, and that's what we do because we do play. When we go on the road, they do pay us nice to play on the road. So I'm, a, I'm an expensive date. I'll just say that when we go on the road.